Got to talk about what everybody's talking about. Yeah. We got to talk about the big move yeah. from the Pac-12. Oh, yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure <laughs> your ears have been burning since the announcement was made. But let's... I try to avoid the torches that people are putting in my ears. Well, but, yes. let, but let's talk about that because it's a big move. Yeah. And in the minds of many people, should have happened a long time ago. Yeah. And I've had people to... When, I, when people found out I was talking to you, yeah. they would, they've would they asked me, find out why they were so loyal to the Pac-12 yeah. for so long. Let me, let, me, let me give you the answer to that. So... So, I was an athlete in college. I don't know if you knew that. I did. I was a Division I uh, javelin thrower at Iowa State. You and Garth Brooks? Yeah. I don't know about that. I don't know how far Garth threw it, but he seems, like, well, he seems like kind of a stud there. So. <laughs> he was at Oklahoma State, I yeah. believe. Well, that was in the Big Eight at the time. So, so my loyalty to the Pac-12 wasn't for the Pac-12 as the Pac-12. It was to regional athletic conferences competing against each other and then competing nationally. So I'll just go all the way back. So I've been deeply disappointed that the football championship series, the selection of the bowl series, isn't the conference champions. Right. Uh, that it's a committee and so forth and so on. And, and, and that's fine. But I, I just thought that you should have these conferences. You shouldn't have to fly 4,000 mile round trip or a 5,000 mile round trip to play a volleyball game. Uh, remember, we have over 20 sports. Yeah. And so I was interested in old school regional conferences. The Big Eight in the Midwest, the SEC in the South, the Atlantic Coast running kind of along the coast, the Mountain West, the Pac-12. Partly from the perspective of what are we asking our student athletes to do? Partly from the perspective of uh, not getting to a scale where you have 20 or 30 or 50 teams in a single conference and, you know, winner take all. I mean, so we're, our assignment is to produce great student athletes, to graduate them, to compete at the highest level of athletic performance, to demonstrate to the country what competitiveness really is, to produce a few professional athletes, which we do, and to produce a lot of Olympic athletes, which we do, between the colleges. And so my commitment to the Pac-12 would have been the same as if I was in the Big 12 at mm -hmm. the time, or the Big 8, or any other conference, and that is, could we keep sports college at scale, could we keep sports in the spirit of the athletes that made some kind of sense? And we're sort of past that now. So what was the what was the decision maker for you? What was it where it said, OK, we have now we have we this is a better option for ASU? Well, so so in the last year, the Pac-12 uh, CEO Council met dozens and dozens and dozens of times. And then last week, I think I canceled 30 meetings of my normal meetings to deal with Pac-12, Big 12 issues. And so. You know, we had it. We had what I thought was a great offer from Apple. Most most of the fan base didn't think it was a great Apple, but I mean, a great deal. But I don't think they knew that much about it. So basically, what the Apple deal was is Apple would spend five hundred million dollars in the first year to take all the football games, all the men's basketball games, and all the women's basketball games in the Pac-12, digitally capture them and make them available to everyone, and um, uh, and you could play the games whenever you wanted to play them. That's a huge, huge, huge thing. And mm -hmm. all of the data from those games would be available. So you could zoom in on Mike Broomhead, the player. You could zoom in on, you know, great plays. You could be watching all the games at the same time if you wanted. There was going to be a, a fee for that, and that was the big uncertainty. And then a guarantee of a certain, uh, price, a certain income to the schools. And then a joint partnership going forward of anything above the guarantee would be a 50-50 split. So from my perspective, you kept the Pac-12 together as a regional conference. You move towards the broader football championship now, which now is going to have eight teams instead of, of uh, four teams. Uh, uh, and that meant that the conferences would really be there. And then you'd have this whole new way to broadcast digitally all of your content. Most of us thought that was a pretty good deal, including me. Uh, along the way, others didn't think that was a good deal. Maybe that Apple shouldn't do that. And so at the last second, the Big Ten, working, I would guess, with their media groups, picked off two teams on Thursday of last week. This is only one week ago. Yeah. So there was a big meeting scheduled for Friday morning. And big markets. Yeah, all, yeah, all big, yeah. Friday morning, uh, last week, um, 7 a.m. We're all supposed to get together and be ready to roll, rock and roll. Well, two schools don't show up. I'm like, that's not good. That could mean the Pac-12 is is uh, being threatened. I mean, it really meant that. It really meant that it was done at that point. 
And so by 1030 that morning, and you might, I'm not going to walk you through everything that would allow this to happen, but that meeting was at seven. That meeting ended uh, 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 right before eight. Uh, and uh, by 1030, I was meeting with the commissioner of the Big 12 and three of the presidents. Now just imagine that. Yeah. Now that doesn't just happen. Right. Uh, and then later that afternoon, they they accepted our our uh, uh, desire to join them, and we uh, next year will be a part of that conference. Mm -hmm. And so what this is is, you know, we make very hard decisions here, right? With lots and lots of diligence and lots and lots of focus, and we do listen to everybody. You know, the inputs about this and this and this and this. And so at that point, regional conference is gone. Would you have made the decision to go if it broke up the rivalry? game with U of A? We had already committed, uh, Bobby Robbins and I had already committed that we weren't going anywhere but together. No. And that, it's important to keep that bowl game. It's great for me because I'm a Miami Hurricane. Yeah. And so I can watch that just for the passion yeah. and the rivalry that it is. Yeah. I don't have that m emotional investment. It is, it doesn't matter what the records are of the school. It is a great game every year. So we are, we Arizona and Arizona State, we are, we are uh, sisters, rivals with each other. Uh, jealous from time to time of each other. And, and we have all of the things that go on in real families. I mean, this is like a real family. You know, you love each other, you argue with each other, you stomp out sometimes, you know, but, but we had decided as a family that we were not separating. And so we made that decision a long time ago, uh, uh, Bobby Robbins and I, President Robbins and I. And, uh, and that's the way that it, that it went down. And he and I talked dozens and dozens and dozens, dozens and dozens of times in the last few weeks. One of the other things, again, people, the criticisms that come, I'm not a sports guy, but yeah. the criticisms have been, you have such a requirement for excellence at this university. Yeah. There's been a lot of questions about your loyalty to the athletic director mm -hmm. and that maybe um, some of the decisions that were made weren't the excellence in, in athletics that you hold the standard to academics. How do you respond to that? Well, so what's interesting, I, I, loyalty is a, is a powerfully important characteristic of any person, certainly the people that I deal with and certainly me in the way I deal with others. But having said that, you know, I am responsible for the outcome of all the things that we're doing. And one needs to take a broad, long term look at what we're doing. We used to graduate no one from athletics. No one. Football team. Very few people graduated. Basketball team. Very few people graduated. We now are the second highest performing entity uh, academically in the Pac-12 and one of the highest in the United States. So we have a high performing set of student athletes actually graduating and moving forward with their lives, with their degrees in their hands. And I'm very proud of that because it's, it's been very important in football. While we've also been underperforming in football and underperforming in, in uh, basketball, men's basketball, we believe that we are still in the hunt. And that means then that when we come back and become uh, athletically uh, uh, more competitive, we will then be both academically and athletically competitive at the highest possible level. And not everyone can say that. And so, so uh, my commitment is to that outcome. Uh, in all things and with all people, you know, I'm, 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 I hold everyone accountable for all kinds of outcomes. And so uh, net net, we've made huge progress in athletics. We now have to make progress in, in football. You know, we have, we have, we have uh, fired two coaches in the last uh, several years. That's been very expensive. Uh, this coach, uh, 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 Coach Dillingham, uh, young, uh, kind of a uh, uh, savant in football. I mean, people are talking about him as if you know he's a he's a prodigy. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we'll see if prodigy can can happen here. And in basketball, men's basketball, we are making serious pro progress. Uh, in women's basketball, new coaches, and, and if you look at all of our sports, you know where we are, where we're doing. People people are concentrating, and I think disappointed about football. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and so am I, uh, but that's not the whole story of the whole thing that we're doing. I mean, we're, we're running a very large, very complicated athletic department. We do have a completely renovated, unbelievable state of the art football stadium. We do have uh, new facilities in baseball, new facilities in golf. We're going to be building new facilities in track. Uh, you know, we, the athletic department is a massive enterprise with, with over 20 teams, hundreds and hundreds of athletes, uh, you know, we, we, we have swimmers breaking world's records in swimming, but people aren't paying attention to this. You know, we have the Olympic swimming coach, the Olympic wrestling coach, the Olympic uh, women's triathlon coach, all working for us, Olympic golf coach. Uh, you know, we have all these people working at ASU. So the coaches that we've been hiring, the things that we've been doing, we're underperforming in football. 
and now is the time to see whether or not our uh, prodigy can make it happen. So the naming rights to the stadium, how did that happen? Well, so all along, we've been looking for ways to pay for athletics. And so there's many, many, many stadiums at colleges and professional stadiums. And so we've been looking for the right kind of, of partner. You know, we, we can't just have anybody name our stadium. And so, and so uh, you know, finding uh, uh, financial organizations, healthcare organizations, others that sort of live in the same realm that we live in, you know, they'd like to get their name known and we'd like to get some resources uh, to help our sports programs to be successful. I've already heard from the WVU, West Virginia University uh, president, Gordon Gee, Iowa State, uh, Wendy Winderstein, Baylor, other schools, Kansas, uh, uh, Central Florida called me. Uh, uh, unbelievable. In fact, uh, we're going to Houston, uh, the, the new schools in the in the Big 12, uh, the traditional schools there. Uh, we, so now so now I see it as we got two Utah schools bunch of schools in Texas, two schools in Arizona. That's a little regional thing for us. So now I think that's going to be a good outcome for the division as it ultimately uh, shakes out. So the answer is yes. We already have uh, Iowa State and Central Florida are a part of our University Innovation Alliance. So we're excited about that. And then we are looking in all these cases to work with them. Utah's closely allied with us. Uh, uh, President Randall up there and uh, uh, Chancellor De Stefano up at uh, Colorado. So the answer is is yes. No, no. I know the two presidents, uh, particularly one, the Washington president, very well. She wouldn't do that, uh, Anna Mari Kaza. But what I do think happened, you'd have to talk to them. But what I I think happened is that the, uh, you know, there's a, a a lot of forces out there that didn't want the Apple deal to occur. So there's I, I referred to it in one interview I gave as the, the overlords of the media <laughs> companies. Uh, and so there's just forces out there that I'm not, I, I just know they're out there. They're trying to make certain things happen. And, uh, you know, it, it's to their advantage to have certain kinds of conferences, certain kinds of designs. That's what I think was going on.